Hey, all you hoop junkies out there, I'm Steve Carfino bringing you the best of the Molten Waratah League, better known as the Rap. Let's start off with championship men. In a win over Manly, Jason Kadee put on a show at Bankstown Stadium, scoring 42 points on 13 of 22 from the floor. Norse dropped their first game of the season, and it came at the hands of the Central Coast on the rooftop, home of the Norse Bears. The Crusaders went in at halftime, up 22 points, jumped out of the gate. Matt Beta and Callum Jenkins both scored double-doubles, and Tommy Akamamoy came off the bench for 24 points. The Hornsby Spiders won every quarter to beat the Hills Hornets. In a low-scoring game, Newcastle were able to keep the Southern Sharks at a safe distance the whole game. The Sydney Comets crushed the Illawarra Hawks. They shot 50% from the field, won every quarter, and had five players score in double figures. And on Sunday, the Sutherland Sharks dropped their second game of the weekend at the hands of the Maitland Mustangs. Terrell Turner and Mitch Router combined for 43 for the Mustangs. Now, crossing over to the championship ladies. At Bankstown Stadium, big third quarter for Manly was enough to get the roadie for the Sea Eagles. Newcastle made Sutherland take the long drive home about three hours and change, I believe. Bianca Green was one point shy of the Hunters having five players scoring double figures. Hornsby got Hills. Kate Seabaum with a balanced attack from her team. She led all scores with 17 points and pulling down nine rebounds. Manley held the Comets to just four points in the fourth quarter. You're not going to win many games like that to secure their win. The Seagulls, Rebecca Duke, was best on court with 26 points, eight rebounds, and five assists. In Division I men's, it's the country teams teaching the Sydney folks a thing or two with only one Sydney team in the top four. The Canberra Gunners in the Wagga Heat proving their dominance once again, both picking up roadies. While the Sydney Uni Lions have maintained their consistency, currently eight from nine this season after defeating the Bankstown Bruins over the weekend. Robert Dwyer pulling out the big guns in that one with 21 points. Switching to our nation's capital in a game we knew would be a thriller between the Queen Bee and Yowies and the Lithgow Lasers. More like Adam Marjoram versus Sebastian Kiao. Both guys pulling out the big numbers. The Lasers getting that one done on the road. While out at Hawkesbury, the Jets were struggling to get their season off the ground after suffering a loss to the Hills Hornets. Despite a home court advantage, Hills were able to put that game into overtime with a big three from Carl Carlos. Hills not able to take the two points back home with him and also had four players in double figures. Carl Carlos best on court with 18 points. In remaining matches, St. George were able to get a comfortable win over the Sharkies, while the Waves and Southwest Razorbacks were able to get it done. Now moving over to the ladies. The Maitland Mustangs have been the team to beat in the Division I women's. And this weekend, Newcastle been able to get the job done holding the visitors to just 28 points while it was just like that in the men's. It's the country teams dominating the league with Coffs Harbor Suns teaching the Bulls a thing or two in their clash over the weekend. While Shoalhaven and Wagga were able to bring home the wins for their associations. As always, our Youth Division is brought to you by BNSW Campus, who, by the way, are taking applications for their July intake. Let's move to the ladies, youth, women's. And it's a fierce competition at the top of the ladder against the Penrith Panthers and the Central Coast Crusaders. Over the weekend, the Panthers were able to leap into number one spot in the youth women's with their win over the Southwest Razorbacks. While the Crusaders were able to get the W against the North Sydney Bears, Charlie Evans putting up some big numbers in that one, but not enough to overshadow Matty O'Hare, who's had back-to-back -back great weekends. The local derby between the Hornsby Spiders and the Hills Hornets proved to be a thriller, going down to the wire with the home side getting it done by just one point. The Hornets were able to hang in there and get a massive fourth quarter to fall just shy at the end. Jessica San Cotolato and Amelia Iskowitz putting up the big numbers for their side. In remaining matches, Manley were able to pick up the roadie despite the loss, Madison Bennett proving to be best overall on the weekend, scoring 27 for the Bruins, while Newcastle were able to get it done at home, defeating the Sutherland Sharks.
Crossing over to Division II Youth Men's, the Central Coast Waves are still proven to be the team to beat. Still a perfect 8 from 8 after defeating St. George over the weekend. Brendan Ferris and Hayden Ellis combining for 36 points. While out at Hawkesbury, the Jets were able to sneak a four-point victory over Manly. Hawkesbury's Liam Moss was outstanding, scoring 28 points, putting him 24 points clear of the top score in Division II. Rianne Greenup was able to catch up with him after the victory. I'm here with Mossy, the captain of the Hawkesbury team. What do you think got you over the line? Because Manly nearly caught you at the end. Yeah, they caught up at the end there. Uh, we just kept their heads up and like struggled, not struggled, hustled through those hustle players and made some shots at the end. And yeah, we were lucky enough to get the there. In remaining matches, Hills were able to pick up the weekend double, defeating both the Spiders and the Penrith Panthers while the Sydney Comets were able to get the W at home. Continue to look rock solid in the top four with their win over Bankstown. Sharp shooting A. Belgian with 26 points and the hardest working man in youth league, Matt Dunsmore with 22 for Manly. Newcastle have been putting the scare into teams for weeks, finally getting one over the line against Sutherland. Five Newcastle players scored in double figures. The Central Coast stay unbeaten with another good road win at Norse on the rooftop. Tommy Akamamoy with another big one, netting 29 points. The Inner West outgunned Blacktown in a game that featured at least eight rim-shaking dunks. The Bulls moved to top four thanks to that win. After trailing by 13 at halftime, Mossvale were able to create some second half magic to get their two point win over Penrith. Sutherland bounced back to split the Northern double with a win over Maitland. Now it's time to showcase the top performances in the Molten Waratah League thanks to our friends at MVPOnline.com.au who will be giving them some great prizes. Let's start off with the ladies. In championship women's, it was Rebecca Duke. In the youth league, it was Bankstown Bruins' Madison Bennett. While for the gents in championship men, it was Jason Kadee. And in youth league, from BNSW campus, Liam Moss with 28 points. Thanks to our good friends from MVPOnline.com.au, here are the lucky winners from round 10. And for the fellas, it was Springwood Scorchers' Dennis Starman. And for the ladies, it was Tegan Burke from the Bathurst Gold Miners. Now it's time for the huge announcement that I know you've wanted to hear and I've wanted to tell you. The finals weekend for Basketball New South Wales is being played at Scholastic Sports Stadium in Terrigal. Woo! The best of the best will be featured that weekend, and we'll find out who the winners will be in all of our different divisions. Well, that's all the time we have for the wrap this week, but I'd like to leave you with this thought. Not every victory is shown up on the scoreboard.